This little RTX 3060 is the Amazon's choice graphics card. Now you may be thinking, David, it's probably because it's an affordable graphics card that offers a lot of value. Well, I'm here to tell you that pigs fly and Santa's bringing you a new dad for Christmas that isn't gonna make fun of you every time you wet the bed. Today's video, I'll go through all of the many, many reasons why this Amazon's choice is a pretty poopy choice of a graphics card. Now for the price I paid for this thing, I was expecting a version of the 3060 hewn from Xerxes' chest hair. Instead, we got some of Napoleon Dynamite's pubes, apparently. This is a pretty losery variant. But it's a 3060, it's not pumping out a huge amount of heat, so it should be fine. We'll find out soon enough. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the RTX 3060 is a bad graphics card. I mean, I, I haven't tested it yet, so we'll see how it holds up today. But there are things that are redeeming about it. It's got 12 gigs of video memory, which its older brothers don't see seem to have for some absurd reason. But at this point, it's three generations old, and paying 470 Canadian dollars for one does not make sense at all, and we'll see why in this video. So with that, let's go drop it in a system, see how this graphics card holds up, and then pit it against its many, many, many alternatives. Now the system that I'm going to test all of our graphics cards in today is the Geek Squad system with an Intel i5-4600K and 32 gigs of RAM. Now it's not the biggest COD piece of a system, but it's something you'd realistically use graphics cards like these in. Now we're starting off, as usual, with CS2 so that we can gauge the eSports performance of this very popular graphics card. Ooh, lots of frame rate. Now, as is usually the case with CS2, uh, the graphics card isn't 100% being utilized. So it'll be interesting to see how much variation there is in performance in this game with the different graphics cards, especially considering our i5 in here. And then in terms of temperatures, as I predicted, despite our tiny little cooler, uh, we're doing pretty well. 65-ish isn't too bad. Interestingly, the 3060 actually is drawing more power than I remember it doing. We're getting about 135-ish watts from the GPU, and that's not even with full utilization. Um... Oh, that blind headshot. So efficiency might be another way in which we gain with some of the other variants. Oh, I'm not recording. Oh my god. Moving over to Cyberpunk, at 1080p high settings, I am impressed. This is in the 80s we're getting here. Well, it, it fluctuates, but still, that's pretty good. You can play this game at high settings and have it feel good at 1080p. Also, in terms of GPU utilization, with our 3060 running at 100% utilization, it's drawing about 170 watts of power, which is quite a lot for a 60 series card. Uh, I think there was a decent amount of efficiency gain going to the 4060, but we'll find out soon enough because that graphics card is relevant for today's video. Uh, other than that, this is usable. On a side note, you can see the frame rate's higher here now. That's because there were some issues applying settings with Cyberpunk in the previous shot. Uh, so later when I use benchmarks, it's gonna be more in line with this frame rate than the one you saw just now. Now for Stalker, I am going to be testing it using FSR native AA so that we get an indication of what the 1080p performance is like of the 3060. Yeah, medium is giving us in the mid 40s. I mean, it, it does depend on what's going on in the scene. I mean, this is a better result than I was expecting. It's not amazing, but with a little bit of DLSS on here, the game will definitely be playable at 1080p. So even with like UE5 games, you're kind of in business with the 3060. And then finally, in terms of games for this roundup, I'm gonna use Doom The Dark Ages because it's been very demanding to run and I'm curious to see how the Amazon's Choice GPU handles it. Uh, so I'm starting out with 1080p medium settings and this is with FSR uh, running at native AA. So we are rendering at 1080p. Okay, we're looking at about 60 frames per second here. This is with 1080p medium. So the thing with the Dark Ages is that even with a low frame rate, the game doesn't feel terrible because there is basically no stuttering going on. I mean, look at that frame time graph. For 50-ish frames per second, 
that's pretty good. I then slipped into some quality DLSS just to see how it feels. It's pretty playable. I mean, yesterday I spent a while playing the game at around 80-ish frames per second, and it feels good. So, you know, this is, this is definitely a usable result that we've got at 1080p with the 3060. It is just a real shame to see that the age of running Doom at over 8 million frames per second is very much behind us. So generally, in a vacuum, at 1080p, this Amazon's Choice graphics card seems to hold up pretty well. Even Stalker 2 and Doom the Dark Ages are pretty playable. I mean, for those games, I would definitely use a bit of upscaling in there. The thing is, though, the graphics card market is in a vacuum. There are a lot of other options. In fact, if you just scroll down the page a little bit, you can actually get an RTX 4060, which is the newer version of this graphics card, for less money than that 3060 cost. So let's put the 3060 against its younger, cheaper, and more efficient sibling to see if Amazon really made the right call here. Cause who knows, maybe the 3060 being better endowed swings some games in its favor. Now we're starting with CS2, and obviously because we've got an extra thousand in the name, I'm expecting a lot more performance, and well, uh, no, it's performing about the same. Shocking, I know, a game that doesn't fully utilize graphics cards doesn't benefit from more power. Who would have thunk? It kind of illustrates the point that when it comes to esports titles, unless you're rocking a really beefy CPU, the kind of thing that you probably aren't using with a 3060 or a 4060, you're gonna get about the same performance with these two graphics cards. However, there are some changes. The first one is the power draw. With our 80-ish percent utilization, we're getting 100 watts of power draw, which is a decent bit less than we got with the 3060. Now with Cyberpunk, we start to see a difference. Here at 1080p high settings, we've jumped 28% in terms of frame rate, which does make a pretty big difference. I mean, it's like 130 frames per second. So in this game, you could either jump up a quality setting or you could just bask in the majesty of the more frame rate. However, where it makes the biggest difference is at 1440p, where you jump from an average of 74 frames per second to 89, which makes a big playability difference in the game. So at that higher resolution, the 4060 is performing a lot better than its little brother. And it's doing all of that while drawing a decent amount less power. So you get more frame rate, less power draw, and it's cheaper. And it's, it's pretty much a win-win there. Now with Stalker 2, again, we're seeing a pretty big jump. The game definitely feels better. And this kind of step up in performance means that you only have to use DLSS quality as opposed to like balanced, which makes a big difference to the visual fidelity of the game. And all that for less money. I mean, this is... This is an easy choice. And then finally, Doom the Dark Ages, where we've stepped up from the mid 50s to the mid 60s, which again, makes a considerable difference to how the game feels. I then leaned on DLSS again to see where we'd end up. Now we're looking at almost 100 frames per second, which this feels really good. Like this is way more than just a playable experience. It feels like some good Doom action. Now, having seen this performance delta, I don't even think that the 4060 is the Amazon Choice graphics card's biggest worry, because you can spend a lot less money and get a graphics card that's potentially even faster. And the graphics card in question is the RX 7600, which you can buy from not Amazon for $100 less than the Amazon's Choice RTX 3060. So let's see how it stacks up. So here we have a significantly cheaper graphics card, the RX 7600, and with Counter-Strike, again, the performance is functionally identical, which means if you're paying a lot less money, why not get the 7600? Now with Cyberpunk, I've been getting a lot of crashing. I just recorded a bit where it crashed halfway through and I'm not gonna have the screen capture for that, uh, but I was able to get some benchmarks and it's not performing quite as well as the 4060 was, but it's definitely better than the 3060. The instability though is completely disqualifying, although that could be because of the specific variant of the card that I have here. It is an Acer card, so who knows? It could be dying of bird flu, I don't know. 
Uh, but with that, let's move to the next game. Stalker hasn't crashed yet. I've done a benchmark and everything and it's still running. It seemed to have been isolated to Cyberpunk. Uh, interestingly, in UE5, we're getting the same performance as the 4060. So we're getting quite a lot of variability with the RX 7600, which may also be the case for the next graphics card that I'm gonna test. What is interesting to me though, is the power draw situation. 175 watts. We're looking at around what the 3060 was drawing. So yeah, that 4060 is pretty efficient. Apparently the RX 7600 is a really good value. And if you really want 16 gigs of video memory, you can get the RX 7600 XT for the same price Amazon was selling the 3060 for. With Doom the Dark Ages, we are actually dropping quite a bit compared to the 4060. So that variability really sneaking in here. I don't know, I was kind of expecting the Dark Ages to, to perform pretty well on the 7600, but that's not the case. You know, it's still usable. This is, this is better than we were getting on the 3060, which is a huge problem for that graphics card, considering that this is well under $100 less. But with that, there's another graphics card that I managed to buy recently for quite a bit less money than the RTX 3060 off of Amazon, and it's the Intel B580. And what's very exciting about the Intel B580 is that it stands up to the 3060's body standards of 12 gigs of video memory. Now the B580, I actually tested one of these GPUs recently and it struggled a bit with CS2, which is kind of the case here. But again, the performance is functionally the same. Like, the biggest issue here is the CPU. It's not the B580 GPU. So if you play a lot of CS2, then you'll be happy with the way that this runs. Now in my experience, Cyberpunk is a game that loves the B580 GPU. They are just sitting in a tree, going to town on each other's mouths. Just... And here you can really see it. I mean, at 1080p, the jump is a little bit, but when it comes to 1440p gaming, there is a big delta in performance between those two GPUs. Yeah, at 1440p, Cyberpunk runs really well on the B580. An interesting note here, in terms of efficiency, the B580 is much closer to the RTX 4060 than either the other two GPUs were. It's really interesting how variable the performance is, especially on the B580. I feel like there are some games that it really likes and some games that it does not enjoy interacting with. Uh, but Stalker 2 at 1080p struggles quite a bit on this card. We're getting closer to RTX 3060 performance here. Now, what I did find testing in a previous video was that the B580 with Stalker does perform quite a bit better at 1440p relative to the 4060. Uh, but in terms of 1080p gaming, it does not love this title. So generally, I would say the B580 prefers 1440p gaming over 1080p. So it means that the kind of monitor that you use also plays into which variant of these cards you should get. Ooh, Doom the Dark Ages seems to like some Intel GPU Heine because we are getting about RTX 4060 performance here. Uh, now, I, I get that in terms of the grand scheme of things, it's not that impressive, but compared to Stalker, what we just saw there, this is running very well. And again, oh, that frame time graph, it's beautiful. I then finally decided to try some 1440p. So we've dipped from in the mid 60s to the mid 40s. That's a, that's a reasonable drop. Uh, what is interesting here is seeing our video memory usage because we've got 12 gigs with the B580, which the RTX 4060 doesn't have, which unfortunately didn't gain us any performance over the 4060. Bit of a shame. And with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, clearly the Amazon's Choice graphics card isn't great considering that there are three much better options. So yeah, don't buy a graphics card off of Amazon, which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe, maybe watch another one. And until the next video, bye-bye.